one passage. There's several other passages that show us that Jesus has given Peter special authority. And I'm sure you, most of you have heard this before. Could we go to John's Gospel? A couple books later. John chapter 21, verse 15 through 17. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to, the, to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. So Peter, Jesus is talking to Peter. What did Jesus just tell Peter three times? Feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. He said, feed my lambs. Look after my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you know who is the ultimate good shepherd? Christ, right? He is the good shepherd. Why do you think he's telling Peter? Peter, I'm the good shepherd. But he's telling Peter, take care of the sheep. Was Jesus going to remain on earth forever? No. He was going to go to heaven, right? Yep. He wanted somebody to be the shepherd of his people, of his lambs, his sheep. So he's telling Peter, I am the shepherd, but I'm going to be leaving. I want you now to oversee my sheep. And when he's talking about sheep, who's he talking about? <laughs> okay. All of, All of us. Okay. So he's telling Peter, you are now going to shepherd my flock. There's, there's a lot more. Can we go to Luke's Gospel? Backtrack a little bit. Luke, chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. Here Jesus is talking to Simon, or Peter. He's saying, Peter, Satan's after you. But I'm praying for you, Peter, so that you may strengthen your faith. And once you strengthen your faith, Peter, you must strengthen your brothers. <clears throat> Jesus is telling Peter here, Peter, I'm praying for you, and I want you to strengthen your brothers, your fellow apostles. I want you to guide them, Peter. So Jesus is telling Peter again, I want you to shepherd my flock. I want you to be the leader of the apostles. There's lots of other passages in there, but let me just throw some things out at you to show the importance of Peter. A lot of people don't realize this. Peter's importance in Scripture. Peter, the only person in the New Testament that had his name changed. Do you know, do you realize Peter wasn't his original name? Simon. Simon. Remember what his original name was? Simon. Simon. It was Simon. But Jesus went in and changed Simon's name to? Peter. Rocky. Okay. <laughs> Peter means rock. Jesus changed his name to rock. And just a little bit of background history in Scripture... God only changed the name of a couple people in the entire Bible. Does anyone know some of the people some of the people that God changed the name? Abraham. Abram to Abraham. Jacob to Israel. There weren't very many people, but every time God changed the name of a person in the Old Testament, God selected that person for a special role in his salvation plan. And now in the New Testament, only one person ever gets his name changed, and it's good old Peter. So signifying God has a special purpose for you, Peter. Another instance. Do you think if you were the CEO of God's church, 
Do you think your name might be listed more than other people in the Bible? Isn't usually the leader listed more? When you look at the New Testament, Peter's name is listed 195 times. 195 times. The closest other apostle is listed only 29 times, which is John. Again, Scripture just points out these things to us, that Peter is an important guy. Whenever there's a list of apostles in the New Testament, when they list out a string of apostles, guess whose name is at the very front of the list? Peter. Peter. Why do you think his name is listed first in line? Because, God told the church because he's the head apostle. Just think, if you were to list the... The governmental structure of the United States. Who would be a number one on the list? George, George Bush, right? Because he's the president. And then you'd go from there. Well, the Bible does the same thing. The first person in the list is the main person. And also, we learn that Peter is a primary figure in that church, early church. So, Peter, the head apostle. So, what we're trying to get at now is we're still on these ministries of the church where an apostle and all apostles have the same authority and out of the apostles there's one head apostle and in the very early church it was Peter okay in the Catholic church this is the structure it is today we have the office of apostles that continue, and we have the office of a head apostle overseeing the other apostles. Does anyone know there's a term that we give to the head apostle? Oh. You're here with Pope? He was just here in the United States last week. What he is is just the head of a group of apostles. Okay, so far so good? Okay, wonderful. Christ gave authority to the apostles. He made a head apostle to oversee the other apostles. <laughs> but we have a big problem. You know what that problem is? He set up the structure. He set up the structure of the church through these people, these men. Any idea what the problem is? They're going to die. They're human. They're human and they're going to? Die. They're going to die. They're going to die. He, he, Christ goes through all this and sets this up. And he's setting it up with people that are going to die. So, the question is, did Christ establish a way for these apostles who have his authority to pass on their authority? To other people yes. and that's what we're looking at here because this is a biggie we get a little sidetracked here this is the claim that Mormons claim the Catholic Church is wrong do you know this mm -hmm. they believe that Christ gave authority to the Apostles but what they believe is when the last Apostle died the authority was gone right Todd it ended, yeah. it ended. That's why they believe the Catholic Church is wrong, okay? And their church is right. Well, let's look at Scripture, and let's see if Christ, in his infinite wisdom, knew that these people were going to die, and let's see if he put something in place to, to, so that these people can transfer their authority to other people. So, let's do that.